I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive, where you'll find great stories simply told. Drive-in movie theaters were extremely popular in the 1950s and 60s. Land was cheap and entrepreneurs were eager. But who first thought of the drive-in movie theater? In the late 1920s, Richard Hollingshead Jr. started experimenting with the idea of an outdoor movie theater. He hung a white bed sheet between two trees in his backyard and parked his car so it faced the sheet. Next, he placed a film projector on the hood of the car. Sure enough, once it became dark, he could see the moving images against the bed sheet. Uh, but what about sound? He decided to put in a call to a sound engineer at the RCA Victor Company. Hollings had described his plan for an outdoor theater. The fellow assured him that three good-sized speakers placed around a large lot would work. Hollings had put together a full-scale plan for the patent office. Cars would be directed to line up in rows facing a big outdoor screen. People could watch the movie from their cars or sit on benches up near the movie screen. By the time his patent came through, Hollings had owned a 400-acre lot in Camden, New Jersey. He named his company Park Inn Theaters. The drive-in opened June 6, 1933. He charged 25 cents per car and an additional 25 cents for each occupant. But competitors were hot on Hollingshead's heels, opening their own movie theaters. He took them to court for licensing fees, but collecting was next to impossible. In the meantime, these other companies had good ideas. Some hired RCA to wire their theaters. The system involved two detachable speakers hung on poles that were placed between where cars would park. Speakers could be brought into each vehicle so customers controlled their own sound. And what about popcorn? Just like indoor theaters, drive-ins count on snack sales for a profit. To encourage families to arrive before dark when the movie started, drive-ins added playgrounds and picnic tables. Of course, it was hoped that families would buy popcorn, hot dogs, and drinks, too. For that same reason, most drive-ins offered double features. A break between movies gave people more time to get hungry. Like Holling said, most drive-ins sold tickets on a per-customer basis, but people loved to game the system. The driver paid for himself and his companion as he arrived at the ticket booth. Once the car was parked, several additional heads would pop out from under a blanket in the back seat. Drive-ins were really popular with teenagers who loved the privacy and with families who always hoped the young ones would fall asleep so the adults could stay for the second movie. During COVID, some organizations created makeshift drive-in theaters, but for the most part, the era of drive-ins has passed. Land values have skyrocketed and theater owners did better selling out. I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive. Look around and see what inspires you.